Melissa with the stockswish.com and I'm doing a video here now today live with the class on AIG. I had a friend of mine that came to me the other day and he brought his 401k statement. Works for a huge, huge, huge company. Has a great match with his 401k. 100% up to a certain percent and then after that 80%. I was almost flabbergasted when I saw how well his company actually supported his 401k. Now he's been with the company for 19 years. That's very rare as well nowadays. But the company's a big corporation. And he wanted me to look over all the things that he was invested in, which I did. Some of them were funds. And I said, well, I need the breakdown of what's in the fund of the funds. And so then he had to look it up and come back to me. And one of the things was this. What's the first thing right now, I'm quizzing you right now, that you see in this chart of AIG? It looks very much like the market. We just looked at the QQQs. In fact, this looks almost exactly like the QQQs. AIG triggered in a buy setup. Friday, this is Friday's bar, I know it looks skewed, but it came in here with the market on these two days and it looks like the market here in the queues from Friday. This is AIG and this is the market. See it? Does everybody see that? Now, we just talked and talked and talked in the class, which unfortunately I didn't get on tape, but we were talking about the whole bank collapse that happened which, which I was doing mortgages at the time. It was 2007 and 2008. Let's go back and look at the chart of AIG, which was uh, very, very involved in the, in, the, in the near collapse of the banking system back when all that happened due to credit default swaps that this company was insuring, which is mortgage-backed securities that they were insuring. This is an insurance company, AIG. I hadn't looked at this in so long, I didn't even remember if I the last time I even looked at it. And then because it was in... My friend's portfolio in a hedge fund in a 401k, which by the way was full, full of insurance companies. And I thought that was very interesting that this fund was in ma majorly in a lot of insurance companies. Anyways, guess what? Then I looked at this and you know what I saw? When I went back in time, that. So at this time, I wasn't even trading in 1999 and 2000. What was I even doing then? I don't even know. But anyways, I, I didn't know anything about stocks or the market or anything. Look at what this was at. The high of this stock at one point was over $2,000 a strike price. 2046.25 up here at the high. This is back in, this is 15 years ago. Look at that. Today is December 5th. Look at this, people. This is a good lesson. 12-6-2000, the high of the stock hit an all-time high 15 years ago to the, to the day. It's December 5th, 2015. This is, this is not, there's a reason we're talking about this today, obviously. You people are going to learn something. Low on the day was 2000. Even, look at that! 15 years ago. And what has happened in the course of time in this stock? Now, I tell you many, many times that most stocks tend to go down in value over time, not up. It's, an, it's a misnomer that they go up in time, with very few exceptions of which there are in the market. There are exceptions, absolutely for sure. Market movers, strong stocks, leaders in the industry. But in general, over time, one of the reasons my strategy is successful, despite the, despite the overall course or trend of the market, which is bullish and was since the day it made my system, is that most stocks do tend to go down in time. So you better be very choosy what you hold and buy long term. Anyways, this obviously moved down for not just the fact of the point what I'm saying. It could have continued higher, but it didn't. Why? All of this in here is happening. Well, this really tried to hang on here in 07. I'm looking at this. It did hang on in 07. This is, this is, this is the end of 07. Look, it hung on here in 07, and then it fell off a cliff in 08. So it really did hang on in 07, but things started to fall apart in 07. But it hung on, it looks like, until 08. <clears throat> and then this was really the collapse of everything. And when I actually started in the summer of, it was here. It was like in the summer of 2008, right in here. Even at this point, the stock had lost more than 50% of its value, but was still worth $700. Look at that. Crazy. And you say, how could this be? So you look at this, you say, oh, this is, you know, whatever. It's worth $63.90 or whatever as of the close of Friday. But at one point, this was over $2,000 15 years ago. So this, this stock 
has never recovered, which I thought was very interesting when I looked at my friend's portfolio. The stock has never recovered. It's seven years now since 2008. The stock has never recovered since what happened with the collapse of all of the credit default swaps and the mortgage-backed securities, all of the way that the banking laws have changed and the whole industry has changed, which, which I don't think it will ever go back to be that way again, but you never say never. Anyways, this has not recovered. You can say it's recovered and you can think it's recovered, but it hasn't. Because look at what it's worth now compared to what it used to be. I'm not saying this doesn't ever recover. I'm saying that it hasn't recovered. So when you when you look to do something with a with a with a stock, you have to take all of this into consideration in here of what happened. I mean, this was one of the companies that could have gone bankrupt and probably would have gone bankrupt if the United States government hadn't bailed out the banking industry. It did. A lot of people think that they shouldn't have done it. And if they hadn't, AIG would have gone under. AIG was primarily responsible for, for a lot of the credit default swaps that actually existed in the market. And you should Google and read about that, or even what a credit default swap is. I don't want to get too off target. But even as someone that was in the mortgage industry and the banking industry at the time, I didn't know all the ins and outs of this until the whole thing started to fall apart. And then you, and then you find out about it. All these things that are going on behind the scenes. No one realizes how much money all these companies have. I mean, do you, do you know that, look, look at this. I mean, look what this was worth at this time. Let's just see what Apple was worth. Oh, we can't go back. We can't go back because those charts have changed now. I'm not gonna be able to see for real. Let me just look. The chart's still here, but the number isn't gonna be right. Shoot. Yeah, I don't know what the real number is here. Let me just look at 2000 and Apple. I just wanted to see leaders here. See this, it's, I just can't tell anything here now because everything's changed in this stock. But it was in an uptrend. It was in an uptrend into the rally into the year 2000, Apple was. But you can't tell anything what the price really was here because this has changed. Same, same thing with Google. You can't, you can't tell. But I'm telling you, for anything to be worth this much, I'm, I'm just trying to think if anything, even now, I can't, I can't, I, what, is there anything even now that was, is worth over $2,000 in the market as a strike price of a, of a company? I mean, if Google had stayed that way, it would have gone over that. Then they split. I, I can't think of anything. Could anyone think of anything? And this just gives, this just, just this, the point I'm trying to make is what the discussion we were having about the banking industry, we really got off track here, but this is a good discussion, is that banks have a lot of money. So, and AIG is, you know, is an insurance bank. Yeah, see, this is all messed up in here too, but I can't even go back and see before this and this one. <clears throat> Give me the ticker symbol. Give me the exact ticker symbol, Alex. And anyone, anyone else that wants me to look at something that's crazy high price. I can't think of anything though. This ever got up over 2,000. Nope. Although this is this is heading there too with the market. This is heading up there. This is heading up there too. But it's heading up there much more nicer than the AIG.
Well, this wasn't even around in 2000. I wanted to go back and see what things looked like in 2000 to compare it to AIG. But this is not, I mean, this is not, look at the volume in this. This is, this is not tradable for people. This isn't, this is, this isn't, this isn't something to compare to AIG or, or, or something like even Priceline. I want to, I want a company that's tradable, that people can train. This is, this doesn't fit the category. Anyways, getting back to what I was saying, and then I'll and then I'll finish up the video here. This, the point I'm trying to make is that stocks tend to go down in time. Number one, and banks have a lot of money. Okay, so 15 years ago would have been you know seven eight years for the bank industry collapse. One of the biggest companies out there, and most expensive ones, was AIG, and look at it now. So the whole lending practices have changed. They may never go back to the way that they were. Banks must do something to make money. And they were making a lot of money in lending. Now, banks still make money in lending. That's true. But nowhere near what they were before. And banks were also making money in companies like AIG by insuring each other's mortgage-backed securities. They were insuring each other's mortgage-backed securities, charging a fee for that. That's like not ever going to go back to be the same way, I don't think. Again, never say never, but probably not because laws have changed now. To basically try to protect you and I from ever having a bank go under based on something like this that they're doing to make money. But this company probably would have went under if the government hadn't stepped in. And it, this company was involved in everything tied into every bank that was out there. And that's why at one time, the stock was the most expensive thing in the world. And even to think, even today, we're, we're struggling to find something that's even worth $2,000 a share when a market's been rallying now for the last several years. We're struggling to find it. And look at companies that are hugely successful, like Google. Nowhere near even this price. Now, I know the stock split, but still. You see the difference between something like that and something like this? These, the concept I'm trying to explain here is, is the strength and the power that, have, that, that banks have, in the, in the, it, that banks just have, okay, in the market. And now they got to make money, and they can't make money in letting the way they used to. So they got to make money in the market. And they're going to do it by being in the market. And that's all she wrote. I mean, it's just, you just got to understand the system that we live in now and the way that it's, that it is. It's different from the way it used to be, but it's same concept. Banks have to make money. They have a lot of money. They need to make money. Okay. And so it's, it, they're making it now in the market more so than ever. This is Melissa with thestockswish.com. Email me if you have any questions at melissa at thestockswish.com. Have a good day, everyone.